Fidalgo Show. This is your host, Rick Dehijo Benya, and this is the 13th day of August, 2018. It's time, 18, it's time, it's time for another show. Uh, this is episode 8, and this episode is going to be called Authentication. We're going to go specifically through the process of authentication and explain to you why it's necessary. Uh, there's going to be a lot of questions on this, and I'm going to go ahead and tackle it uh, right now. But before I get there, I want there's a couple things I want to say. Uh, number one, thank you to my patrons. Uh, you guys are what keep me going. If it wasn't for my patrons, uh, you know, I'd probably lose hope and just, you know, uh, do something else. But you guys keep me going. Uh, my group on Facebook, uh, Sovereign Love Free Church, you guys, you guys keep me going too, and I thank you for, uh, all of your, all the, the relationships that I have with each and every one of you are so, so very important. I do have a major announcement. That major announcement is that I am starting a blog, uh, but this is going to be a private membership only blog. And it's meant to be very specific about the things that uh, uh, I'm advocating that everyone do as part of the ways of the Lord. Uh, and because of the specificity of it, I think it's very important that it's done in a private setting in such a way that it's uh, password protected and, you know, everyone has to sign up. There is a free membership um, but for the real good stuff, there is a small uh, monthly, you know, consideration. So, uh, but that's not being done to, you know, make a living. Although, yes, it'd be great to be able to uh, do what I feel the Lord has called me to do uh, on a foolish full-ish time basis but uh, you know what it's all in God's timing I don't worry about all that kind of stuff but uh, I did want to make that announcement and then secondly um, we're going to cut here to the screen in just a minute so that I can show you what it looks like on my website my website has most all the information about authentication uh, but there's no description so I'm going to describe it for you on the video while we look at it. So without any further ado, let's go on and go look at the screen. It's all about the blood. Yep, that's the slogan in the ministry I operate and with the products that I buy. Hi, I'm Rick Tahijo Binya, and I'm the host of the House of Hidalgo Show on YouTube. If you're looking to promote your health with CBD oils, you're looking at a booking. Book greenflowerbotanicals.com for your health needs and use the link provided in the comment section of this video because doing so will help you cleanse your blood and promote the blood of Jesus to the world. Just join our Healthy for the Blood campaign by ordering through the link below and a percentage of the sale will benefit my ministry. It's all about the blood. Okay, we're back. This is the screenshot. And by the way, I wanted to mention, I kind of forgot to say this, but uh, there is no additional uh, cost to patrons. Uh, patrons who are signed up under Patreon are automatically included in the blog. Uh, I call it the Edubyte Premium content. So... Uh, you guys are going to be receiving a username and password in the mail uh, very soon with your free gift that I'm sending you. Uh, it's simple, but, you know, it's the thought that counts, right? So, uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and get started here. What you're looking at is my website. This is uh, the Rock of Salem at or, uh, the, the Rock <laughs> the Rock of Salem dot o r g so dot org and uh, this is my private official site for 
the tribal government of my house. And um, as you can see, you know, we're a self-governing house of natural born Americans who handle our, who handle our affairs in a way pleasing to Yahuwah, our sovereign, Yahuwah HaMashiach. So, uh, so uh, I've got some tabs over here. These links, uh, this will bring you back to the home page. This over here is a sister house. Uh, I'll take you there real quick. All right, there's a sister house. These are uh, friends of ours who have officially started their tribal government. And because of that, uh, you know, we we made a treaty together and uh, I put their information up on the Internet uh, for noticing purposes. And then I have an About Us section. The About Us tells a little bit of the story of how I went from being, uh, my surname being Hidalgo, to my uh, tribal name being Dehijo. It tells that story right here. So you can look at that if you want to. <clears throat> then I have an Acts and Resolution section. And these are uh, some of the acts. I haven't really been keeping up with them very well. I've got more acts that I haven't put up here. But I mean, this was generally put up there for noticing purposes anyway. So, you know, it doesn't really, it's not important that I put all my acts up here because I'm a private house. But there's some of them. Okay, here, uh, if you click on church declaration template down at the bottom here, I believe it's going to take you. Oh, nope, it's taking you a 404 error page. Okay, that's because I took it down. Uh, and I may, I'm, I'll work on getting that back up. But that that's going to be your template for creating your own tribal governance. Okay, then uh, if you mouse over the acts and resolutions, there's a hall of records over here. That's where we're actually going to be. So this hall of records, you can see that I've got a bunch of counter deeds listed. Under the counter deed section, there's uh, the patters, the matter, councilman, and all of my seed, and an heiress, <clears throat> all these different uh, capacities are listed underneath the counter deeds and if you click into the counter deed let's just look at mine this is what an authentication looks like now this is the first page that's going to be on top of your authentication as you can see it was recorded in my house on the 8th day of February 2017 we keep all the records here at home I have a record keeper. I have a secretary who does that. And there's the file number. And here's the counter deed. And the counter deed basically just instructs them of what this whole thing is doing. I would urge you to go look up the definition. For counter deed, if you Google it, it comes right up. It's from the second edition of Black's Law. And it is a super powerful definition. I think you'll start to understand the importance of it by reading the definition. Second page is the declaration by affidavit of ownership. We are taking ownership of this entity that was created at our birth. The all caps name. The all caps capacity. The U.S. individual. Okay, we're going to take ownership of them. Here is that information here. All right. Now, uh, I also included a page called Affidavit of True and Correct Copy because I had a notary actually testify and certify that the following documents are a true and correct copy. So here they are. This is the Department of State document that you'll get back at the very end. This is when you send it to the feds to Sterling, Virginia. They'll send you back a document that's sealed. That's their seal on the left bottom there. 
uh, I took a little bit of carbon paper and kind of rubbed it on there so you could sort of see it. And then, you know, I got a little write up here. John Kerry signed this one because I did mine while he was the Department of uh, State figurehead. Back on the fourth day of September 2015. So, and then there's some laws here in the corner that this whole thing is pursuant to. These are very important. I, you're not really able to read them on mine because mine's kind of faded. But I'll show you another one. Here's the back of it. You can see the seal a lot better. Sorry, that was my text. I didn't turn it down here. Okay, I got rid of that sound. So, there's, uh, there's the back of the seal. It's a beautiful seal. Then there's the United States. See, this is the California uh, Secretary of State that uh, stapled their copy of authentication over the top of my, here's the back of it. As you can see, it's a seal because it comes out through the back too. Over the top of my birth certificate. This is, this is what I started with. You start with a birth certificate. This is my birth certificate. And then you send it to the state you were born in, which is in my case, state of California. And I had it authenticated for Taiwan because that is a non-Hague country. That's important because if you don't pick a non hague country, then they'll do something called apostille. And you don't want an apostille. You want authentication. So uh, that's what I did. And then they sent back this, this letter here on top of my certificate of live birth. Then I sent it to the feds and they sent me theirs, which is this one. Okay. Now... Let's get into let's get into something here. I'm gonna show you like my daughter's my daughter's counter deed is a lot clearer when it gets here. Here we go. Here's those laws. I'm gonna see if I can't uh, make this bigger. It's PDF. I should be able to make it bigger. Oh, uh, here it is. So I'm going to blow that up a little bit. So you should be able to see uh, issued pursuant to, okay, state of September 15, 1789, one stat, 6869, uh, 22 USC 2657-22 USC 2651A. 5 U.S.C. 301, 28 U.S.C. 1733, uh, 8 U.S.C. 40, uh, 1443F, and Rule 44 of Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Okay, these are very, very important. It's really important that you understand what this functions as. There are several statutes here that give evidence to the fact that now that you have authenticated this document it can be used like an original now the significance of that is if you had your original um, certificate of live birth or the actual title that they certificated, okay, uh, you would be clearly the owner of that uh, of of that entity. It's just like if you go to buy a car and uh, you complete a bill of sale and you're holding on to a bill of sale, that really is the title to the document or excuse me, to the car, okay? It's the closest thing to a title to the M MSO or MCO that you're going to get. Uh, but if you got a hold of an MSO, if you were going to go to a brand new 
go buy a, a vehicle brand new and let's say you were going to buy it you know directly from Ford just off the top of my head and you bought it directly from them without a bank <clears throat> they would send you an MSO or an MCO which is a manufacturer certificate of origin or statement of origin that is the closest thing to a birth certificate for a vehicle that you could possibly get that is the title but normally what happens is people don't have that kind of money so they finance the vehicle and the bank um, gets that uh, manufacturer's certificate of origin or statement of origin and uh, and essentially what happens is the state will keep it and then they will send you a certificate of title which reflects that the title does exist but it is not the actual title and therefore it puts you in a place of subjugation to whom holds the title so you know that that's the trick that's what's been going on for a long time now is we don't own our own statement of origin and because we don't own our own statement of origin how can we claim to be in charge of that statement or excuse me of that uh, that entity so we are reclaiming the entity by going through this process of authentication and the reclamation in our case is not for um, it's not for governing it so much as it is for the uh, the right to park it and the right to uh, later salvage it for whatever it's worth so and those are our rights we we are entitled to those things because it's ours and that's what we have to point out I want to I want to show you one more thing too the holder in due course this is my daughter's uh, cert certification of birth okay the holder in due course is who who's named on the document who can be a holder in due course? The father, the mother by her maiden name, which is also a trick because that's a probation problem. Oh, excuse me, a probate problem. It appears as if we're not married, doesn't it? Because her her name is still maiden. And then here um, is my daughter's name. Of course, that's not her. It's the child's name, but a name is not you. A name is your what you're called by or a title. In this case, it's a fiction. So who has the ability to hold this fiction? Who can be a holder in due course? Well, she can, my wife can, or I can. Okay, there's three people who have the possibility of being a holder in due course. So uh, keep that in mind as you go through those um, um, this set of laws down here at the bottom because you're gonna run into some language about holder in due course so you need to know that too alright well so that's that let me uh, finish going through the website and then we'll uh, call it a day for this uh, after I explain a little bit more about authentication um, now there's also the tab instrumentalities these are a list of the instrumentalities of the house of Dehijo these are all the different uh, things that I'm that are registered under my house they're not registered anywhere else only under my house and then uh, if you mouse over instrumentalities there's Chat has its own page and that's because you can actually download from here the 
taking the chat package okay as you can see this package allows you to join as a member here's a second point what does it cost to remain an active member of the body of Dignachat ten dollars annually for ten dollars you can be a member a member uh, brings you into uh, a relationship with us where we can start to do we can start to help you get things accomplished so that's something for you to consider as well so that that's there for you to look at also trade agreements this is what I call them I call them trade agreements I have in my possession in my house vault a certified and authenticated 1849 ratified California Constitution okay so that's that's the law form that I'm uh, bringing forth and then certified by and then I have a certified by Library of Congress uh, unanimous declaration of the 13 colonies and that's a really cool document it's 11 by 17 very cool uh, also I have a certified by the Library of Congress Constitution of the United States of America circa 1787 in the uh, house vault as well so I have all the law forms. I know what the terms and conditions are for me to live by in America because I have them. And I'm going to live by those terms and conditions. I know what uh, limited authorities that I've given up. I know what those are. And I don't mind that. That's fine. It's just all these other things that I haven't given up that uh, I'm not willing to part with. Okay. Members. We click on members. Oh boy. Oh, I see. It's wrong. It's the wrong link. I apologize for that. If you look up at the top here, you'll see it says the rock of Salem dot org uh, forward slash membership dot HTML. That should not be there. It should be uh, forward slash membership. It's actually a folder, not not a hypertext markup language file. So I apologize for that. I'll get that fixed uh, ASAP so that you guys can check out the membership section. Actually, I'll type it in here in a minute. And then uh, I've got contact section. So if you've got any comments or anything you want to make, you could always put it in the contacts uh, area here, the comments. And you could send me uh, a message through the website. And then I have some useful links. And these useful links, I've got fountain pens. Uh, these are the fountain pens that I, you know, are good starter pens for people. I believe in fountain pens. They adhere to the paper. The It's a quality ink that's used in fountain pens, and it adheres to organic paper much better than a ballpoint pen does. So I believe in them. Signet ring. I have a signet ring. Uh, and our signal ring was made by these folks at uh, custommade.com and then also I have a link here for 100% cotton paper uh, this is a place that makes 100% cotton paper paper papers paper papers .com. okay good paper and then uh, Zenzoi uh, fountain pens this is a uh, cool place that makes some fountain pens that are uh, pretty neat. So there you go. There's the Zenzoi fountain pens and cartridges for your fountain pens. Uh, then I've got a bunch of YouTube videos. These are these are old. This is when I first started discussing the idea of uh, building a house. Okay, so you can go through there if you want to and check it out. All right, and that's all I got on there right now. So you've pretty much had a tour of my website. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in up here uh, membership. And you'll see when it comes up. 
here we go this is the edubytes premium okay edubytes premium just another wordpress site and i've already got one post on there um, and it's only for members with exclusive permission to see it so i'm not going to go down any further but um you see it does exist it's here it's kind of a beautiful picture i, I, I like this and we're going to uh, uh, try to post as often as possible on there about all kinds of different issues and I hope that uh, my uh, members enjoy it but I just wanted to show you that um, I, I, I do want to say this I'm not one that likes to uh, you know uh, ask for money but I want to say this if you're contemplating being a member and you're wondering what it's going to go to, okay, it's going directly to, to my ministry. As you know, because this is the House of Hidalgo show, the God and Wrestling Connection, I have a wrestling ministry. And that wrestling ministry needs some equipment. We want to get some video equipment so we can do live streaming of our shows, uh, so we can impact more people around the globe than just a handful of people in Lesterville, South Dakota. So that's a very important part of our process. So we need some pretty sophisticated uh, equipment. It's going to be somewhere in about a three, three grand area as far as our budget goes for that. Uh, there's going to be more accessories that aren't included in that 3000 that three grand. But three grand is what our initial goal is for phase one. Uh, we also want to get a circus tent. Uh, those are... The size we're looking for is 40, 40 by 40 or, or above. That's a pretty big tent, and they start to get into the 5,500 to 6,000 uh, 6, range. So 5,500 to 6,000, somewhere in there is what we're looking for for a tent. So as you can see, I mean, we've got some things uh, that we definitely are shooting for. And uh, I do believe that, you know, God's going to give us the increase on those things. And I don't depend on any one of you to do that. Uh, so I never want you to feel that way. I hate to be begged, so I don't like to beg. And so don't take it as a beg, please. <laughs> I just want to let you know what it's going towards because uh, that's an important part of understanding how, what, what you're supporting. When you're supporting a show, it's not going to my pocket. It's not going to any kind of a liberal, uh, you know, organization. It's going to somebody who's going to demonstrate the love of Christ to the world through a very unique medium, professional wrestling. So with that said, uh, I think that's pretty much all I have for that. I don't have much else to say about authentication other than to say that it is the first step it does eventually filter into your uh, public record that you're authenticated and they do begin to treat you a little bit differently but that goes away quickly if you start to act you know um, antithetical so you want to be careful about how you act and the things that you do so it's it's kind of self-explanatory but um, we're fixing your status. The first step is authentication. I hope you all get it done. Uh, send me comments. Send me emails. Send me whatever. Let me know if you need any more help. Let me know also if you've gotten authenticated because that's a big piece of it too. I don't know how much longer to talk about these kind of things. Are you guys actually doing this? Are you not? Uh, communicate with me. Let me know. With that said, uh, I think that's all I got. Uh, God bless you guys. And we'll see you next week on the House of Hidalgo show where the blood will never lose its power. Because what you made me see, become what you